as always by my friends. Oh, it's a podcast. Binary Janus. Joined as always by my friends. A hole in my shirt. Um, joined as always by my friends, uh, Allison and Chris. I noticed as I was nervously like rubbing my arms and you know. The hole in the your shirt just, just got top billing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> joined as always by my friend of the hole in my shirt. <laughs> Allison and Chris. And that order doesn't seem wrong. <laughs> I guess it is we do. who is closest to you. <laughs> we do this thing where we show up once a week-ish and we uh, talk about stuff. Usually Allison brings a topic. Usually Chris and I have no idea what the topic is. Often we make fools of ourselves guessing at the topic. More often we avoid it entirely the show binary jazz dot us on the internet you can find us on twitter that's 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 it i uh i need to i need to practice intros apparently nah panicked a little nah it's it's better when when you have no idea is is better in in what sense of the word uh better in the it that it's more entertaining when i drop the fact that you're doing intros like two seconds before you do the intro and then hit record um better i'm thankful that you only ever do it to gary and not to me (laughs) (laughs) well it's like showing up for a meeting at work and they're like uh gary you're leaving this meeting right yep (laughs) I don't leave many, many meetings because I don't have many meetings now, which is pretty cool. Um, so the ones that I am leading, I generally know about, but occasionally it happens where one pops up and I was supposed to be prepared for this meeting and I'm not prepared. And I, I hate that. Like I really, people not showing up for meetings, like not prepared drives me up the wall. Like, give me just a minute. No, you knew this was coming. It was on your calendar. I will not give you a minute. Nor will I give you my oh, undivided okay. attention now. Jeez. This is scary. <laughs> I came to I spend write are, bad code and what are your other business ass. pet peeves? And what I am some, not out of bad code. <laughs> what are what are my what, business pet peeves? What if someone uh, late constantly? Yeah, that drives me baddie too. Uh yeah. Yes. How about early I, constantly? <laughs> well, that's me. So what I do is if there's a link for a meeting and I am busy coding. I will fire up the meeting in the background with some of my music. And then when someone says, hello, I stop the music and join the meeting because I can get work done in that Delta between whenever and wherever. However, I tried that now and I have a nasty fatal error in my screen and I'm like, I wonder what I did to cause that. It's not on prod or anything. Oh, that reminds me. I did just push push, 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 push. (laughs) prod. Oh Oh, no. Oh, it it was unrelated. I was supposed to push just to prod, but, uh, let me just notify the person that was looking for it that it's live. It's there now. As part of our um, global initiative to refactor, we are taking hard-coded logic out of our code base related to customers, not cust- uh, different sites. Um, and uh, sometimes that means, like I've uh, kind of flagged, like, let's just do it. Like, let's you know, these are one-line changes. We can get a couple people to look at them and make sure it's good and get like get it done instead of dragging this out for months and months. Because it feels like greater liability to have these things handcuffed in place than it does to put it out there. So it's literally removed. And this is so boring. What's the topic today? I'm sorry. <laughs> the, to- the topic. I'm even bored and I'm talking. <laughs> I, I was gonna I was gonna talk about how I how I learned how to bullshit through meetings. Um, but we could just move on. <laughs> You're like we're 20 minutes into this one and Gary hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> Feel like I, I feel like I have like the polar opposite of, of like you're leading this meeting. All right, what's the topic? Sure, cool, let's do it. I, I, I had I, I actually that there's two there's two discussions uh, during the the retreat the virtual retreat that we did that like were just ideas that I had like things that I thought should be talked about. Um, I had zero uh, like I didn't have talking points. I was like, no, we should just have a conversation about this thing. So. You're I, very, and that's like I think the Dungeons and Dragons in you. But you're very like it's an the improv theater like, geek in me. Yeah, you're like very yes and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of what this whole podcast is based on. <laughs> yeah, I try to be. I try to. That's that's. Uh, it's a good observation to hear because I try to be yes and Stretch in my 
in my DMing and sometimes I feel like I'm not being yes and enough. And, um, and so, it, and then I get like really self-conscious about like, you know, should I have handled this differently because they were offering an opening and I could have taken it rather just say, rather than saying, no, that's not going to work, you know? Right. But I mean, within that, you can still, you need to be yes and, but within like the boundaries of the right. world, yeah. like <laughs> there has to be some. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to, you're not, they're not going to, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna re recreate the entire existence of magic or anything. You're like, well, now you just walk through a wall. Well, yes, and great. <laughs> you walked through the wall. Now what? <laughs> I actually had this whole conversation last night with with uh, Aaron about how, um, like, I was feeling uncomfortable last night in our game as a DM because the encounter that they were like working through the the battle they were working through um like the enemies were sort of obvious enemies i mean there is like a couple giants and a troll and a bear that was their pet and the troll was also kind of their pet and the and the two giants had like a romantic relationship so like one of them was like bringing the other one like treasures that she found somewhere um and but you're like you're you're the whole the whole premise is that you're let they they ate a bunch they killed and ate a bunch of people and so you're following these these giant footsteps to this this large cave structure and um and you're just barging into their home right like like who the hell are you you, you barge into their home and then you fight these <laughs> things because because you, because you're just there right like do you go in and you're like what's going on here oh there's a fire with some meat roasting over it like and then obviously they're going to come out and say hey who the fuck are you and they're going to try to kill you and then you have a fight but in the, in in the background there's this whole like like there's this romantic relationship where like he stole the the town's mead to give to his girlfriend and she was bringing him these metal scraps as that she found this like treasures and they have this like friend that's a ogre who can't say their name so he just calls them friend like there's this whole backstory and like you never get to hear any of that because you're just hacking on them and like or are you just extracting this to some like sort of societal thing where it's like we just go in there and we don't even care about their real culture it's exactly like <laughs> and like and so i was i was like having this whole like this like i don't know moral guilt about like just having these encounters where you have these characters that have like real stories and backgrounds and things that you never know about because you never actually get to that because all you're doing is running into a dungeon kicking down the door do you, and hacking on things do you know what you need what do I need? A trip to Cancun. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> I just feel like it, it's. I feel like in the 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 universe we're in, I feel like that's just a poorly drawn up character, a lazily created character. That guy Ted Hurries. Come on. Half yeah. Ass. Yeah. I read somewhere on Twitter that, that he's completely an ass. I didn't mean to indicate that he is not a full ass. He's completely an ass. <laughs> the character development in his case. Let the rest, let the record show it is let full ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read on, I read on uh, Twitter, another, another person who DMs said that they sort of solved this problem by giving all of their, their NPC enemies uh, names and refusing to refer to them as anything other than their actual name. And because they're now referred to by a name that mm. um, the players feel more uncomfortable about fighting a, mm. an enemy with mm -hmm. a name. Right. God. So instead of this is too like, Chris, this is like, too real. Fought, we yeah, you fought the ogre. It's like, oh, but that's Edgar. Like, right. Yep. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Edgar has a family and kids. <laughs> exactly. There, 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 the, I like that part of this conversation that like framing that against society, obviously, but, but that concept, like, I mean, can you imagine if like you joined the army and like part of boot camp was like a deck of cards that had um, faces of your enemy? Oh, that's right. That actually happened and it didn't work. Like, like, humanity's broken. It's not the internet. It's not the, it's not the internet at all. <laughs> I also realize I'm, I'm, I'm also like, 
uh, very aware of the fact that like the game of Dungeons and Dragons would be less fun if all you ever did was like go to the cave and have a conversation with the giant and his ogre friend and like you know like in every encounter was just like some sort of like diplomatic agreement and also that's not very realistic either i mean like <laughs> that's kind of the game that i want to play though <laughs> it's like there was this one game that i didn't buy but i i've still i've thought about it enough that i should just go purchase it this computer game where you're basically a barista and you like make coffee drinks but then you also like talk to the people at the bar and like as you're making them their drinks and i'm just like that's the kind of game i need i don't need to be an actual barista <laughs> i just and i don't want to talk to actual people yeah there's a game uh there's an indie game that aaron and i got at one point a long time ago um because it was um a two-player like exclusively two-player game where you are transported into this weird like dreamlike space and it's really just all about like providing a place to to have random encounters with other people um while also exploring this weird space um it didn't really have like a plot or like a purpose it was just like this like 3d space that you go into and like it was i think idea i i think it was like the idea was to be kind of like chat roulette where like mm -hmm. you just go on and you get a random person but we tried to like make it like because it was like it's also like like uh it's also pitched as being like a romantic sort of game um mm -hmm. and so we were like well we could try to do this together right and 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 occupy these spaces together and it didn't really work out because it was trying to be like chat roulette where it's trying to match you up with a random other person at the same mm -hmm. time. And then like, well, I don't want to have those, com I don't want to have conversations with other people. Like that's dumb. <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine and I was just like, well, if we end up moving and da, 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 I was just like, maybe my fear is, is like, how do you, how do you even make friends? Like, I was like, yeah. I don't know. And so I was asking her, cause I was just like, you have really like quality connections with people. Like, how do you go about the original like instigation? Like once you've, yeah. once you've figured out, I like that person. I would like to know them better. Like then what do you do basically? And I was like picking her brain about it, but then it kind of just like came around to being like, maybe I don't want any more friends. <laughs> Which, Which is, is like, kind of dark. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that's fine. I think like stating that is uh no i'm good all right i'll fall up here <laughs> the inn is full <laughs> yeah we have this we have this like back and forth basically on the same topic where like we don't have any real i mean it also feels like you don't have friends in a pandemic when you're not exactly see people but we yeah like i'm we, like i'm an island <laughs> yeah we sort of feel like we don't have friends at least locally um so like i'm like well i mean we can make them like i can find a D, D game that we can go sit on like locally and then we can just do that and like the, surely there will be someone that that no you're obsessed with the hole in your shirt gary i just it's new and the shirt is new or the hole is new the hole is new no i don't own new clothes rarely do i get new clothes well, when i need clothes i go it thrift sounds like because... it might be time Unless you just decide no. to make that a, a, a three-quarter length raglan. Ooh, or I may like, cut, cut above the hole on both sleeves. You can do yeah. the visible mending with like the really beautiful stitches. Yeah, I can totally see Gary. Does it have to be beautiful? Stitches. I could just stitch it. Well, also true. Yeah. Yeah, that might just be the solution. I mean, where am I going to go? Who am I getting dressed up for? I don't know, but do we have a top? Yes. Yeah. That's oh, but I mean, from here up, I'm, you can't, you can't, I mean, you, can't, you couldn't see my stitch job here. The Unless, topic oh, today. Purple. I'll do it in purple. The topic today is pieced. Pieced? Pieced. P-I-S-T-E. Like, oh. Pieced. P-I-S-T-E. Uh, it sounds like a religious word. Or you could say like, like, maybe, maybe if Chris piste. brings his Italian to the table, it'd be like, peace day. Peace day. <laughs> It is in the Catholic Church. It is the 
metal thing that holds it has to hold something silly. It holds well, it's Catholicism, so it's automatically going to be silly. It holds the priest's glasses so that they are available when it's time to read. <laughs> so it's large, no, it's not. It's it's a uh, large sculptured the... metal column that has his glasses, and he goes up to the lectern and he just picks them up off the piece and puts his glasses on before reading. And even if, if what if there's no glasses? Like, what if they can they have twenty twenty vision? Uh, maybe it holds their teeth. <laughs> like going, I, going I, I to the we're going, like, in, we're going into the all goes, priests are old route. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely it's definitely uh it's it's definitely I don't think it's glasses, but I think we're close, Chris. But it's, maybe it's I'm being too specific. Ceremonial in nature. Yes. I would Is that right? Probably, I would if I had to, like I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> if I had to riff on that, yeah. I would say that probably it was like those like you know six foot high candle holders um that's see that word seems too small for something like that is that how words work <laughs> <laughs> that is the quote of the day as soon as we're done recording that's going on twitter um just I was an English lit major, but I had no idea that this whole time I could just be. I only meant like measuring. I didn't mean it was a short word. I just meant like it doesn't feel like it has gravitas. Um, Is that how words work? You... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um. Well, I've actually used the word gravitas uh, now twice this week, and. One time I said it earlier this week, talking about a new repository we're creating, like you need to name this something, like something that has gravitas. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm going to end up calling this project gravitas. And that's so dumb. And it's going to sound like a superhero arc in the story of terrible code. And did you? No, I haven't gotten around to you. It's like a ticket for like next sprint or something. I don't okay. know. Problem for Who knows what will happen by then? Yeah. 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 I may, I may have a better description for it by then, like what it actually does as opposed to gravitas. The phrase I heard that I've adopted lately is instead of kill two birds with one stone, feed two birds with one scone. And I like that. Oh, lot. that is so much better. I've, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> when I was, uh, uh, what, did I, what did I say? I don't know. It probably wasn't, fun. it's probably not funny now because I said it at the time I was high. I said something about killing two birds with one stone and stoning two birds or something. And as I passed the pipe to someone and we all found it highly hysterical at the time. Stoning two birds with one. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even that. It was, it was, yeah, that's the oh. right reaction. That's the right. <laughs> that is the uh, correct response. A yeah. piece. Well, I, I, you're all familiar with pistons. Uh, oh, this is a singular versus singular. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Let me go grab my certificate. One more inside of a piston, there's some sort of a, a thing that like pumps of uh, something, uh, and that that part is. That's not piece. how pistons work at all. <laughs> pistons are pumped. They don't pump anything. It's the explosions that pump the pit. You like it. Okay, the thing that gets pumped. You're like putting the dough piece. in the oven and being like, well, the, well the, I clearly the dough baked, baked, made everything hot in there and baked the bread. Harry, I don't think this is the time the podcast is going to be correct. This is an episode. <laughs> that ship has set sail. Yeah. yeah. So there's the piece inside podcast. the piston. I also don't feel like, feel, I don't know why I felt like I needed to defend my knowledge of car Pistons. engines. Yeah. Internal combustion. I'm a passionate combustor, apparently. <laughs> it's just a weird. Is my, uh, it's a weird day. My country huh? rock band. Compassionate combustor. <laughs> passionate. Is that what you said? I said passionate combustors. That's oh. the next bot. Com the compassionate compassionate the combustors generator. is the cover band. The passionate combustors uh, cover band. <laughs> I would like the cover band more. <laughs> Just for what it's worth. And they wouldn't be as good, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. They they would do like Leonard Skinner style covers of all passionate combustor uh songs. 
Did you know that Leonard Skinner is from Jacksonville? I do because you've mentioned it before on the podcast. Yeah, we have we have we have a, a Leonard Skinner conversation. Yeah. Because okay. I think well, Ben Chris made some sort of claim that he could like name all the members of Leonard Skinner. No, no, some... no. It was it wasn't that. It was it was that um Leonard Skinner, the na- the band name came from oh. their teacher, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. 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 Which sounds like something we'd make up, but but it's totally true. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can you can which Google is why that. Yeah, which is why this is important because often things that sound made up are true. And often things made up sound true. Every what? once in a while, they're the same thing. And rarely. that's why this podcast is important because none of the things that we say okay. sound true. Well, the whole thing's just made up. I mean, we're monkeys with self consciousness for crying out loud. I mean, like, any, does it even matter? No. It's just. What is true? Well, now we just have to sit in silence. What's the. Um, what song. Is there a song that exists that regardless of the cover or version of it, you'll just love the song regardless? All 933 versions of Creep. Of what? Creep. 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 By TLC. Um, no. No. <laughs> By Radiohead. No, that's, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I feel like my exposure to covers recently has increased. Mine is probably Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen. I don't know that there's a crap ton of songs that I've heard many covers of. Like enough covers that it would be many. That's why I said Creep, because that's the first thing I think of where I, I can be like, wow, there's a lot of covers of that song. Right. There's also, a lot of covers of Dancing in the Dark on Spotify. Yeah. 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 That's Did you ever listen to the podcast Coverville? No. Oh, you should check out Coverville. Um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's weekly and there's always a theme. And it's, I wouldn't say I'm like a regular listener, but I pop in and out and I am frequently pleased at what is played there. That's how I am with most podcasts, except for this one. <laughs> Damn. You pop Wilson's in and out it today. frequently, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not always. But not always. Well, what, what would be the opposite, though? Like, so popping in and out, so she's here regularly, which means that she is infrequently pleased. Right. Infrequently pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually tracks with my experience in this podcast, too. So that's <laughs> No, I'm the number one fan. Yeah, you're, you're such a big fan that you've got your spot on the show when it's set. Yeah, due diligence. Yeah. Only being a fan of everything <laughs> opened such doors. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Just think of the things you could do. Oh, the places you'll go. Yeah. Uh, Peace is... Um, <laughs> you know what it is? Since we're talking about... Uh, Not a clue. Peace. That's what this is about. Since we're since we're like bringing up the Italian, uh, the piste, yeah. um, piste, uh, a piste or piste day uh, is actually a type of sausage uh, that is uh, spiced with uh, you know high end, but also with like fennel, uh, and it is uh, cut in little slivers and put on pizza. Did we have the chicken on conversation on record? last week or was that Did off have this? yes yes it was on the okay. show i didn't want to say were, chicken melon were, and not like there were full minutes <laughs> that. devoted to looking at pictures on the internet <laughs> yeah okay i i just want to bring up that that has been disturbing to me now for eight days i'm sorry and uh so when you start talking about sausage i i i got uncomfortable in my chair just in well yeah, just thinking about the manufacturing of sausage makes me uncomfortable. However, sausage, and I wasn't sure where you were going, and I was thinking, what shape is this going to come out in? And oh wait, not, it's time for the game: cat or baby? <laughs> Gary, would you that's like to cat. weigh in? That's a cat. What was the, what was the game? Okay, oh, oh cat I'm or sorry. Baby? No, it's cat. Charlotte now that's... has a yeah. Charlotte's like old now. <laughs> She's not. Yeah, I should bring her on the show. Yeah. Um, we, so we have the internal yelling cat, right? There is also a cat that looks like Morris from Nine Lives that 
we've seen walking around here who also yells outside the house now. So now they're yelling back and forth. At least that makes no, because at least the one inside can't hear. Oh, right. So he doesn't yell back. But if he yells inside and Morris is around, Morris may get started. Although I haven't heard him recently, but it's also been cold. So he's probably hiding out. But yeah, that's a thing now, too. There are, uh, I've, I've, there are Beyond Burger makes sausages that, uh, mm -hmm. that I, uh, are they good? Yeah, they're really good. Um, it's, it, they're made out of like pea flour or something. Um, like it's totally like, like you, usually what? that stuff, usually that stuff like has like tons of gluten to hold it together, but these are like gluten free and, and, and plant based. And, and what is your favorite, like, uh vegetarian meat alternative for um like burger patties um if you're going for burger beyond burger is is pretty good if you're going okay. for um like a veggie patty um there's that's a different thing and there's other there's there's lots of things um but i would probably just rather make those um because mine are better than store bought Katie hasn't been, been Party happy at Christmas with house, everybody. her options so far. So it's um, Morningstar Farms has a lot of good stuff, but not for yeah. like a hamburger. Um, we, but we do a lot of Morningstar Farms stuff. Yeah, like their bacon. Or we have we, a lot in the fridge. We legitimately carry back bacon with us um, when we go to the states because we can't get it here. Mm. Um, but uh, Robin doesn't do like pea flour protein or whatever the thing is. So that yeah. kind of nixes a lot of good options. Yeah, I've been I've been less impressed with with like on comparison with Morningstar as compared to other things. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, and the, yeah, there's a bunch of like good cheeses now too, which we've been very yeah. Happy it's about. like there's a whole world of stuff that it's like I stopped exploring and now there seems to be like a whole new like there's tons wave of, of things. Stuff. Yeah. 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 So we're at the time where we learn what a piece actually is. Aren't we excited? Um, no. So we're mad if it's not <laughs> Catholic related. It's totally Catholic um, related. It sounds, <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds pretty accurate. I just don't know what it is. It's a marked ski run or path down a mountain with snow. <laughs> so Almost like I said, to totally Catholic. Yeah. Totally Catholic. Yeah. yeah. That you have um, to ride down while dressed in your frock or whatever. I was going to say something really inappropriate about Catholic priests and I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just not going to go that. <laughs> no. So like yep. if somebody, if you're going, if you're going skiing and you go off piste, it means like you're going off trail to like non-groomed areas. Like. Oh, I dang. Should, I'm going to talk about that going off piste. I like that phrase. That's cool. living in people a go like, what does that mean? Like, oh crap. I don't remember, but <laughs> yeah. Off piste. I, I should know that living in a state that is largely known for its snow. I was, I wasn't sure. It was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to bring this. And then I was like, I'm going to find out that one of them is like a world-class skier. Oh, <laughs> and like, no. does like, oh, we went opera ski and had <laughs> or something. I don't know. I've been skiing once in my life. Uh, I fell a lot on the bunny hill and uh, did not feel confident enough to go up to the bigger slopes. Also the lifts themselves <laughs> like just terrify me yeah mm -hmm. yeah they just terrify me so like i kind of didn't even want to, to go up to the bigger hills because it's just it's just too far too far off yeah. the ground with like like especially since a lot of them some of them have like a a, a bar in front of you but most of them don't you're just kind of like scooped up by this little Dang. thing and like i get terrified in in those people mover things in like that like go across the the cables in like the, oh, the gondolas yeah yeah right like in in like the amusement parks that take you to from one side to the other side in in like a, a thing like i get terrified Those... i get scared on on the ferris wheel when you're at the top and it's stopped and it's letting people off that's legitimate though because they dismantle that ferris wheel and bring it to another town <laughs> we we know a carney so have you ever seen the movie uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous? Yeah, but I don't remember. Kirstie Alley and Kirsten Dunst. There's that thing. She's talking about her dad and she's just, you know, he just couldn't leave it behind. Once a carny, always a carny. Like... <laughs> yeah. 
I thought that story about yeah. we knew a carney or we know a carney was going somewhere, but it was just you're just ending it right there. No, we do. We know a carney. All three of us used to work with a carney. The and I we'll put a oh, pin in this. Oh, it. I know, I know the carney. Okay. Oh wait, I think I know who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and given that, like, I will never ride another ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if I blocked you on Twitter, then I'm <laughs> not going to ride the ride. <laughs> Valid. Valid. Um, but yeah, that's. Oh, we have um, we have Gary's questions. Gary's questions, what? right? Gary, Gary. We scroll questions. up. Uh, so I earlier were, this week. Where's one we're going to rewrite? But otherwise, yeah. 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 Well, we could just skip that one because it actually turns out that, well, that I didn't read the instructions and I was only supposed to answer six of those. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got five minutes. I, we might not even get through all of them. All right. We'll start uh, with the, the last one first. The, starting with the last one? Yeah. The if last you, one, I, I don't even have it on my screen, but the last one was, if you could have any other name, what name would you choose? If you could choose any name besides your name, what would you choose? Uh, I actually have an answer to this because I went. Go for it. This I is went, where we find out Chris isn't his real name. <laughs> well, I went by Raven for all of college. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That was going to be the name I chose. <laughs> for you or for Chris? No, for me. Yeah, I. Well, I, I guess I don't have a choice then, do I? I. Uh, <laughs> I, I, when I. I'm changing my Twitter name today. When I, when I first got online. Um, well, in high school, I used to sign my name with a Horus I, uh, an I of Horus, and then, and then I, um, and I, and I, and I, yeah, I started. I, I found, I found the name, and I found Raven capitalized in a dictionary one time, and it, the definition was a boy's given name, and I thought that was awesome. I don't know why it's a boy's given name. It's, it's not even gendered at all, but whatever. A boy's given name. I was like, that's that's it. That's the thing. And so I, I went, I went, I just started signing like fictional things as Raven. And then online, I started going by Raven Eye um, because like Raven with an I or also, alternately, I would sign off as like Raven with an I, uh, which then got compressed to Raven Eye. And then in college, like, I mean, and then I was like being referred to as that because like when you're in these stupid goth chat rooms, like you go by your online handles with mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was Raven and then that, that continued into college and I was just Raven and I wasn't not Raven until um, graduating. And I was actually, there was a period of time where I was going to possibly legally change my name to, to, Raven? to Raven McClenahan when me and Aaron got married or Raven Reynolds McClenahan or something um and i mentioned it to <laughs> to my dad and he kind of flipped out about the name thing and so i was like well maybe not like i don't want to create like a oh, whole that's thing. interesting uh so so i didn't so yeah i was raven until like 2002 huh. a whole different there's a whole well, weird goth chris out there yeah in the alternate timeline yeah yeah of where your life would have taken you if that was still if that was like your chosen name i think yeah yeah no had um had aaron and i not hooked up i would have probably moved back to san francisco and continued being raven indefinitely fascinating wow Raven is the first thing that came to my mind because when I was younger, we had family friends and both of the daughters didn't like their names and they both ended up changing their names when they were like 16 or 18. And that was the first time I'd ever like known of someone to actually do it. And the whole concept was just like, wait, what? You can do this? Yeah. We can just choose? <laughs> like, <laughs> And one of them changed her name to Raven and I've always been captivated by that because I was just like, well, yeah. that's so much better than Allison. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously that's wrong because Raven is a boy's given name. It's yeah, like, clearly. No, I didn't know. I didn't look Webster at Webster's Dictionary in like 1982. <laughs> oh. Which is a thing that I did, you know, obviously it was like reading the dictionary, opening the dictionary to random pages and reading definitions. That's a thing that, you know, all, all kids do that, right? Yeah. Yes. I feel dumb now answering mine because I have already answered this question. 
uh, at work. Well, you'd and choose Raven, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would have to um, at this point, but the answer I gave at work was not Raven. It was in fact um, Smiley. Smiley. Like Guy Smiley? Just Smiley. Oh, okay. Just that's it. Just Smiley. Yeah. There's no story there. It's just, it's just there's, no, there's none. There's yeah. nothing behind it. I was yeah. just like, this is a question I need to answer. So I did. I didn't give it a lot of thought. I just thought the idea is you're supposed to answer these questions anonymously. And then the answers are read and people are supposed to guess who you are. And I'm like, did people guess who that it was you? Oh, we'll find out Monday. Oh. Tune in next Tune week, in next I guess. Week. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, my, my questions happen on Monday. And it was like a time you went on a big adventure was a question in there. Um, and then what were some other questions? Oh, what did you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, that was the first one on the list. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually I on cardiologist because I wanted to put down something people wouldn't be able to connect with me. Was it like I two wanted truths to be a lie or something? Like, are you like. No, I, I wanted to be a cardiologist for a few minutes when I was a kid. Okay. For a few minutes. Few no, minutes. you wanted to be an astronaut. I do. I, um, I still do. I was, actually changed. Thinking, I was actually thinking about that question recently. Like, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, yeah. And the answer to that question was, I wanted to be a writer. And the reason why I wasn't was because everybody kept telling me about, like, you can't be a writer because there's no money in it and you'd never be successful. And so I stopped. Man, and capitalism that capitalism is a son of a bitch, isn't it? Yeah. And like, I, the thing is, I still want to be a writer like that He's never so went in. away yeah yeah right well i'm i mean working on it uh... thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes google play spotify and stitcher you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at at binary jazz don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.